to move you into another dimension this morning. I'm still dealing on understanding faith. But this morning, I want to digress a little bit on what I capture. Other understanding faith, part two. But I'm dealing on the dynamics of faith. Tell somebody the dynamics of faith. Read for me Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Let's begin. Let's begin the journey fast. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now. Now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. For by it. For by it. The elders. His elders obtain a good report. Obtain a good report. Now, let me quickly do an illustration of the definition of faith. Please get me one bottle of water. I want to do an illustration of the definition of faith. Remember what I told you that faith is a currency. It can buy anything in the kingdom. Now, let me show you something. Okay, hold this water. Um, don't have to Kabado shala yadaba. Follow me carefully. I want you to understand this because lives are changing already in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, what is this? What is this? What is this? Okay, hold this. This is money. I will collect it back. Okay. What is this? This is water. Eh? Now, for instance, let's assume the price of this water is a thousand naira. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Take, now hold it. And this guy wants water. Eh? But what he has in his hand is a thousand naira. Are you steady? What he has in his hand is a thousand naira. Now look at what faith is. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Does he have water? What does he have? Eh? But can the money produce water? That is faith. Give him the water. Give him the money. Collect the water. He has not. He has not. He has not gotten access to the water. But he knows by the revelation of this money in his hand, the water will surely come. He said, "Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, assurance of things not seen." With his money, either they like it or not, is it's what is qualified to get a water. Did somebody just get what I said now? Eh? So look at me. Faith is not what you are looking for, but there is a guarantee that either they like it or not, either there is restriction or not, what you have is enough to bring what you are expecting. Eh? Thank you so much. So take your water. Give me my money. Thank you. Did somebody just say what I said now? So now let me quickly give you a dev- let me give you definition of faith by the help of the Holy Ghost. Number one, faith is seeing it as the way God sees it. Faith is what seeing it as the way God sees it. So if you have not seen it the way God sees it, you, nothing will happen. That was why the first time he called Abraham out when Abraham had separated from the Lord, he said, Abraham. Stand here. Anything you see belongs to you. So your limitation in life is directly proportional to your level of faith. Now, another definition of faith. 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 Faith is the art of sharing responsibility with God in the light of his word. To obtain a desired outcome. Can I take it again? Faith is the art of sharing responsibility with God. In the light of his word. To obtain a desired outcome. You know what it means? Faith is not foolishness. That means in your equation of faith. There is a part you have to play. So it's the art of what? Sharing responsibility with God in the light of his word. Mark that word. In the light of what? His word. To obtain desired outcome. So is there any outcome you want? Yes. Then you cannot just sit down somewhere and say, oh, I believe this will come. It will not come. 
That is why I told you on Sunday that faith is not believing. Huh? Remember what I told you on Sunday? That faith is not believing. Believing is part of faith, but that is not what faith is. Faith is not confession. Faith is not sowing seed. All these things, they are parameters of faith, but they are not faith. So what is faith? Faith is the art of sharing responsibility with what? With God. In line with what? The understanding of his word. In order to obtain a desired outcome. Number two. Number two. Okay, number three. Number three. Faith is the name given to the action. Faith is the name given to the action that we take based on our conviction and understanding of the word of God. Can I take it again? Faith is the name given to the action that we take Based on our conviction and understanding on the word of God, in a nutshell, no action, no faith. Let me also make you to understand this. Look at me. The power of God is released at the point of your action. Huh? Follow me carefully. You'll get what I'm saying. Bring this chair. Bring this chair. Sit down. Bring it, bring it here. Now, I said faith is the action taken. Right? Yes, sir. In line your with your word, conviction. A word, understanding of the word of God. Now, let's assume the word of God comes to him. And he says, sit down on this chair follow me. The word of God comes to him and he says what? Sit down on this chair. Now, let somebody come from there. Let somebody come from there. So you come here now. The word of God comes and he says sit down on this chair. Turn, turn. Do as if you want to sit down. I didn't say you should sit down. Now come. So in the process of sitting down, somebody remove the chair. Look at me. The fact that you are not moved by what is happening in your environment. You are focused on what God has said. Look at me. If he makes attempt to sit, the word of God will not fail. Did somebody just hear what I just said now? Did somebody just understand that now? So it's the action you take based on your word. Conviction and understanding of the word of God. And I said that power is released at the point of action. So God said, oh, move out of your father's house and go to the land that I will show you. He didn't go with anything, but God did not fail him. Did somebody hear what I'm saying? So look at me. The faithfulness of God and the power of God will not come when you hear it. It will come when you take step. Did somebody just hear what I said now? Eh? That is why it looks as if some of you, oh, you are waiting for the thing to manifest before you leave. It's a lie. For example, like somebody that is sick. You saw it in your Bible clearly. That by his tribe, we are healed. Is there anyone sick among you? Let him go to the elders of the church. And let them do what? Lay hand on him and pray for him that such person will be fine. Right? Now, look at me. I told you that faith is the art of sharing responsibility with God. Now, somebody is sick, right? What is the instruction? By his tribe, I am healed. And he saw that, is there anyone sick among you? Let him do what? Go to the elders. Now, the person is moving with, oh, by his tribe, I am healed. By his tribe, I am healed. And yet, he didn't go to the elders. Will the person be healed? No, talk to me, somebody. Will the person be healed? Huh? So look at me. 
Before your faith equation can be complete, you have a responsibility to play. So that is why many of you, you have confessed so many things in very long time. You have declared so many things and yet nothing happens. It's because you thought faith is foolishness. I will sit down here and God will do everything. Hmm. You have a part to do what? To play. Eh? So faith is the action that you take based on what? Your conviction and understanding of the word of God. You know that with two immutable things, God cannot lie. And God said you should sit down. And in the process where you want to sit, the chair disappears. If you sit down, you will not fall. Eh? Oh, you don't understand what I just said now. If you sit down, you will not fall. The Bible said, the three Hebrew guys, they said, Oh, ye king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. We know that our God will save us. And if he decides not to save us, we will still not bow. When they were about to be thrown into the furnace of fire, they did not say, Oh, the fire they deal. They understand that he said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. They understand that he will send his angel in charge of me. So they said, no problem. Since these people did not, they, are, they think we don't know what we are doing. Look at me. The reason why some of you, the reason why you fail along the line is because you don't have conviction and understanding on the word you have read. You just read it and you cram it and you are running about with it with head knowledge. When trouble comes, that word will fail you. Thank you. Did you just understand what I said now? The number four. Kabbalah Shayadaba. Am I blessing somebody here this morning? Number four. In one word, faith is obedience. In two words, faith is complete obedience. In three words, faith is obedience and consistency. First John chapter 5 verse 4. Faith is what? Obedience and what? Consistency. He said, after this, when your obedience is what? Full. So if your obedience is not complete, God is not committed to heart. So the only thing that commits God to heart is when your obedience is what? Complete. Read for me. First John chapter 4, 5 verse 4. 5 verse 4. Yep. For whatsoever for whatsoever is born of God is born of God overcome the world overcome the world uh -huh. and, and this is the victory and this is the victory that overcome the world that overcome the world even our faith even our faith so what gives you victory over the world faith what gives you victory over finance faith what gives you victory over sickness? What? Faith. The Bible said, this is our word. Victory. Even our word, faith. So when you don't have faith, you will not win the battle of this world. Eh? Yeah. So you need faith to do what? To win battle. You need faith to walk in victory. You know, if you listen to my deliverance teaching on Wednesday, I said so much powerful things still in line with this. Eh? That the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 3, he said there was a man in a certain place. And the man quoted what was written in Psalm 52 at the about. He said, for what is man? That thou art mindful of. Or the son of man that thou visited. That you have put everything under his feet. He said, but now there are nothing put under his feet. Why? Because man does not understand the place of victory. Man does not understand faith. 
that all oh, the Bible said in this world there will be tribulations, there will be trial. He said, But be of good share, for I have what overcome the world. You know what it means? Your victory is not just starting at the beginning of the battle, before the battle starts, your victory has been established. So, you need faith to understand this that no matter what you are going through, it's just for a moment of time. Eh? That because the victory has already been won long time ago, over 2,000 years ago, the victory has been declared already. But you cannot assess it if you don't have faith. That is what the Bible says. If your faith fails in the days of adversary, it means your faith is what? Little. Am I blessing somebody here? Am I blessing somebody here? It is an honor to be loved by God. Take it for me. There is a melody in my heart just for you. I give you the praise. The praise. Say you deserve, you deserve the praise. You deserve the praise. You deserve it, Jesus. The praise. Say is an honor. Is an honor to, to be loved, loved by, by God. Kabala Hashan and the other body. There's a melody in my heart just for you. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Say your praise. destiny in business in career in whatsoever field you have chosen even in ministry you need faith to have victory the next time we'll be having our pastors vigil I'll be teaching them faith in, the, in church growth eh? for church to grow there's a part of faith in church growth yeah I'll be teaching you faith for church growth. The pastors in training. Read for me. Romans chapter 4 verse 18. When darkness and the sight of light. Light is about to come now. Light is about to come. Light is about to shine now. Read it for me. Romans chapter 4 verse 18. Who against hope? Who against hope? Believe in hope. Believed in hope. That's Hold on. It. I want to do a little bit study on who against hope. Wait, media, I think I sent you something yesterday, Dixon. Can you display it for me? Huh? Who against hope? Believed in hope. <laughs> Can we do a little bit of Bible study there? Eh? Who against hope? Believed in hope. See what it means? That means the situation does not warrant hope. It's hopeless. It's a situation that nothing can be done about. Who against hope? My wife, the Bible said, Person where not supposed to get reason. Where's Fable? Where's my phone? Give my phone. It's a person where you're not supposed to get reason. Still get reason. I think I sent it to the media. Give me. Let me read it for you from my from my Wafi Bible. Huh? My Pigeon English Bible. Who against hope? Oh. Yeah. He said, Abraham, we no not get any reason to get hope. Still gather faith. Abraham, we you no not get any reason. Who against hope? 
You came back from an hospital with a medical report and from what doctor told you, there is no reason to hope again, yet he still gather fit. Did I just say something? They called you that your family is about to die. And the doctor said, oh, in the next one minute, if, if oxygen is not available, he will die. Who against hope? They just told you that your ship, your goods, just sank. Who against hope? The guy that wants to marry you just said, oh, I'm no longer interested in the relationship. Who against hope? Did I just say something to somebody now? Yes, sir. Huh? The situation is so bad that nothing can be done again. Who against hope? Look at me. The time Abraham believed God to become the father of all nations. Medically, it is against hope. Eh? And the Bible make it very, very explanatory. He said, now Abraham was old and stricken in years. So he was not just old. He was also stricken in years. But he who against hope. Do you know what the Spirit of God told me? Your obstacles are not really the way they are. But obstacles come in a magnifying form. Did somebody just get that? Obstacles come what? In a magnifying form. Issues of life, they are not really as big as they appear. They appear to you in a magnifying form. Remember I showed you something in the same Hebrews chapter 11 that it was by faith that Moses crossed the Red Sea as though it was on a ground, on a, on, on a dry land. Who against? The situation is very bad. Abraham, God appeared to him that Abraham, I will give you a son. After 25 years, he's still believing on what God has said. Is enough for hope to lose. Huh? It's enough for somebody to say, God, you are not faithful. But the Bible said, Abraham, who against hope, still believe in faith. This Bible said, he said, Abraham will not get any reason to take care of hope again. Still gather faith. Say he could be the father of many countries. As Baba God promised him, say in descendants go plenty like Sansan. Huh? As Baba God promised him, say in descendant go plenty like Sansan. Presently, the money in your account cannot do anything, but there is a vision. Who against hope? You just prayed, and God spoke to you that before the ending of this year, you will have your own house. And going by your account balance, your account balance can only produce five bags of cement. But who against hope? Still believe in hope. I think this alone will solve so many problems here this morning. Eh? I think this alone will solve so many problems here this morning. Eh? That no matter what the situation is, if only you can believe again, then something can happen. If you don't believe me, wherever I go, no no If you don't help me, if you don't help me, if you don't help me, where else can I go? Say no way, no way, no way, no way. promise and your love for me what God you say you have done, done I just, I just need to align you because you are nothing under 
changes your mind, oh. Does not know you will last in you. Not in all seas and tarry on. But a heart of flesh, no man can prevail. Oh, no man, no man, no man, no man. No man oh. Your confidence is you. What is that, oh? What is that for you? report is very bad. But who against all? You have read it in your Bible in Matthew chapter 8 verse 17 that him himself taketh away our infirmities. Eh? Who against hope? Abraham said, God, I know you for one thing. You can never lie. It might look impossible now. The situation, okay, this is Moses of 2020. Go back again. Look at Moses of 2020. Now, media, hold on. So, it's like when God, when Moses got to the Red Sea, and God said, Moses, move. Who did not against hope? When Moses, the children of Israel, they got to the Red Sea, and God said, walk upon the Red Sea like a dry ground. But Moses of 2020, people that cram scripture, with no conviction, with no persuasion, with no understanding. They have had knowledge. They go to where the Red Sea is and they see how terrifying, how magnifying the water is coming. The guy pick race. See him. Huh? This is the situation of so many of you in the church today. Huh? This is what? The situation of so many of you. You, are, you can cram the scripture. In fact, you know where it is in the Bible. Eh? There are some of you that you know all the verses of healing in the Bible, but yet you are still sick. Who against hope? Complete it for me. Who against hope? Who against hope? Believed in hope. Believed in hope. That he might become. How many of you can still believe in hope this morning? Against the medical report, against the economy report, against whatsoever that is going on around you, you can still say, God, I believe that you have said it. You will do it. Who against hope? Believe in hope. So that means when the guy was demonstrating the step of faith, people are telling him, You are stupid. Huh? Look at me. Job said, though he slain me, yet I will love him. Who against hope believed in hope? Did somebody just get what I said now? To men, it might look very, very impossible, but who against hope do what? Believe. How many of you can still say, God, I believe in you? My back account might not be speaking the same language with my dream. But who against hope? The date of my marriage, my not is getting close. And there is no any man coming close. Who against hope? Believe. Uh-huh. That he might become the father of many nations. That he might become the father of many nations. Look at me. This is the secret of the men you read in Hebrews chapter 11 that obtained good report. They against hope. Believe in hope. Abel took everything he has. He said, God, take. Against hope. Believe in hope is the number one key for faith. Huh? When faith manifests its result, it looks pleasant, but the journey of faith is not funny. Huh? Look at me. If you read this place, 
Go to Psalm 126, verse 6. Look at me. If you read this place, if you begin to read, how Abraham become the father of nation. Is it not interesting? Huh? No, let's talk. Is it not interesting? When Anna came for dedication, is it not interesting? Huh? When the three Hebrew guy, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they came out from the furnace of fire, is the result not interesting? But is the journey fine? It's very okay. <laughs> is the journey fine? No, somebody talk to me. Is the journey pleasant? But is the result pleasant? Huh? How many, many of you want results? But yet, you don't want to go through the journey. The journey is a journey of who against hope. Read for me Psalm 126. Verse 1. Verse 6. He that goeth forth uh -huh. and weepeth. He that goeth forth and weepeth. Bearing precious seed. Bearing precious seed. Shall doubtless. Shall doubtless come again. With rejoicing. With rejoicing. Mm. Bringing his sheep with him. Ah. But when he was going, how was he going? With weeping. Eh? How was he going? With weeping. How was he going? With weeping. But when he's coming back, he's coming back with what? A precious seed. Joy. So the journey of faith is not pleasant. But the result is pleasant to all. But the journey is a journey of who against hope. Yet! still hope. He might not have done it now, but I know he will do it. This business may not work now, but one thing I know is that this business will work. My ministry might not be flourishing now, but one thing I know, one day, I may not have been pregnant now. But one thing I know. One day. I will be pregnant. Because he said. He that make them in the beginning. Make them male and female. And he said to them. Replenish, multiply, subdue the earth. And in the book of Deuteronomy he said. And none shall be barren in the land. But I know. For now. It might sound funny. But against all. Still believe. The journey of faith. Hear me, child of God. The journey of faith begins with revelation. Did you just hear what I said now? The journey of faith begins with what? Revelation. Because for Abraham to against hope, still believe in hope, that means he had a revelation of who God is. He's not, he's not cramming knowledge. He's not what? He's not coming knowledge. For the three Hebrew guys to say, oh, we know, we know, we know. Even if this man decide not to save us, no problem. He knows. Eh? So hear me, child of God, you can speak faith, but if you have not had the revelation of faith, faith will not work. And revelation does not just come. Revelation comes by understanding. Understanding what? The word of God. Am I communicating to somebody? Yes, sir. Am I blessing somebody this morning? Yes, eh? Look at me. Your journey of faith. And believing God starts with what? Revelation. Look at me. You can't believe who you don't know. You can't trust who you don't know. Eh? You can't trust what you don't know. You can't believe what you don't know. So what is revelation? Revelation is insight to the promise and the provision of God in the word of God. You have insight to the promise and the provision of God. In what? In the word of God. So look at me. There are people that have read this thing. More than 20 times. But no results. They know every verse in it. 
The Bible said, let her kill it. It is the spirit that giveth life. The letter kill it. But what gives life is what? The spirit. Fear people that can quote scripture, but no results. Don't show me how many scripture you know. Show me the revelation behind it. There are people that read scripture like the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. The Bible said he read the scripture and after everything, he closed it. And the spirit of God speaks to Philip. He said, go and join that chariot. So when he joined the chariot, Philip sat beside the man, angry. And Philip asked him, Understandest what thou readest. And the man said, How can I understand when there is nobody to teach me? That is what happens. There are some of you, you read, but you don't understand because there is nobody to teach you. Hear me, child of God, I must submit with this. Holy Spirit is the author of the scripture. So you can't read about a book without carrying the author along. You must carry the Holy Spirit along if truly you want to understand scripture. Because the Bible said why Philip was different from the Ethiopian eunuch was because Philip has the Spirit of God. So, insight is what? You understand the promise, the provision of God in the word of God. So, revelation gives you what? Understanding. When you have revelation about person, you understand who the person is. Am I saying the truth? You build great understanding with who the person is. And how does understanding come? Look at me. You don't guess the path of your breakthrough in destiny. Did you hear what I just said now? You don't guess your path. Mm. No, 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 no. You find out your part of breakthrough. Eh? You don't guess your part. No. Did somebody just say what I said now? You don't do what? You don't guess your part. No. You find out your part by revelation. You find out your part by revelation. Because, look at me, if you don't have revelation against all hope, you will lost hope. Huh? If you don't, if you don't find out against all hope, you will do what? You will lose hope. Because situation will come that will confront that your belief system. Apostle Paul said, I am persuaded. I am persuaded. Look at me. I am persuaded is not a statement of motivation. It's a statement of conviction. Look at me, sitting down and waiting for God, blessing, is like you will sit down and you will end up in frustration. If you're just sitting down and you're saying, oh, the Bible said, and you shall serve the Lord thy God, it is he that giveth power to make wealth. You didn't find out your revelation of your own part. But you are going around with you shall serve the Lord thy God. It is he that giveth the power to make wealth. Look at me. You will die in poverty. Yeah. Because the Bible said, he that did not walk must not eat. So you are believing God for prosperity. You have seen it in the Bible that there is he that scattered and prosper. There is he that we told and what? Turn into poverty. You are believing God for prosperity. You see where tithe came in. You see where he said, give and it shall be given to you. You did not do all these things. Oh. Eh? You did not do all these things. You, look at me. The reason why people are greedy is because they don't have revelation. Greediness is a sign of lack of revelation. Eh? When you see greedy people in church, greedy people in society, is a sign of what? Lack of revelation. 
And that is why I showed you an example on Sunday. When a poor man eats and a rich man eats, there is difference. A poor man will eat because he knows that, oh, after this food, there is no any other one. But a rich man will eat from a revelation that, oh, there is another one at home. So it's not enough reading your Bible. It's not enough. Reading Bible is good, but it's not all about reading Bible. The one you have read, what have you achieved with it? Yeah. The one you have read, what have you achieved with it? You can quote all scripture, but no result. The Bible did not say your result will come by quoting scripture. It will come by playing your own role. So you have a role. There is no blessing in the kingdom that is not conditional attached. There are conditions that is attached to it. If you are willing and obedient and serve me, you will eat the good fruit of the land. How come you saw you will eat good fruit of the land? You didn't see willingness and obedience. You have seen willingness and obedience. What is God expecting from me? What did God want me to be obedient of? What is God willing, wanting me to be willing for? That is how to understand the word of God. Not just read. Oh, did you read your Bible today? Yes, I read five chapters. Not that story. You read five chapters. What is the result of one chapter? But you can read a verse. You meditate on it. You get the revelation and the message that God is telling you. You run with it. Your result will be imaginable. Against all hope. Still hope. Am I communicating this morning? Huh? Am I communicating? Let me show you a scripture. Matthew chapter 17, verse 15 to 20. Lord, uh -huh. have mercy on my son, mm -hmm. for he is lunatic mm -hmm. and so vast. For often times, for often times, he falleth into the fire. He falleth into the fire. In the water. Uh -huh. And I brought him to thy disciples. I generation. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long? How long? Shall I be with you? Shall I be with How you? How long? How long? Shall I suffer for you? Shall I suffer for you? Bring him it out to me. Bring him it out to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. And Jesus rebuked the devil. And he departed out of him. Uh -huh. And the child was cured. Uh -huh. From that very hour. Uh huh. Then came the disciples to Jesus. About the him. disciples came to Jesus uh -huh. and said, and says, Why could not we cast him out? Why could not we cast out this devil? And Jesus answered unto them. And Jesus answered unto because them. Because of your unbelief. Because of your word. Unbelief. unbelief. For very I said unto you, uh -huh. if ye have faith, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, uh -huh. and it shall remove, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible. Was the disciples not with Jesus? Were they not with Jesus? Are you telling me they are not studying their Bible? But why? How come? That they were unable to cast out the demon. Hear me, child of God. Your faith is inactive if it's not planted. Your faith is what? Inactive if your faith is not what? Planted. Hear me, child of God. It is not the mustard seed that will move the mountain. It is the result from the mustard seed that will move the mountain. Remember what I told you? That anytime you are praying, there are two objects that God checks before your prayer can be answered. Number one is your mouth, and number two is your heart. So in the place of faith too, there are two objects that God checks. Number one is what? Your mouth, and number two is your heart. There are people that confess scripture, but here the scripture has not settled in their mind. You've not seen things that are before? They confess scriptures. Oh, I am healed. But yet they are still sick. It became poor that I might be rich. Yet, landlord, they pack their things, throwing it out every day. Can I tell you something? Huh? Can I show you something? Your confession, your persuasion, your understanding is the soil. Your speaking is the seed. 
speak into the soil. No matter what happened, seed will germinate. But when you don't speak into the soil and you are speaking, hey, hey, I will not die but live to see, to declare the glory of God in the land of the living. No revelation about these things, no problem. Which in your village will kill you like chicken? That is where many Christians, they call scripture but they lack power. Revelation, zero. I'm rounding up now. Have I blessed somebody this morning? Who is ready to say against all hope? Against all hope. How many of you are ready to say against all hope? Read for me Romans chapter 10 verse 8 to 10 first. Romans chapter 8 verse 10. Uh-huh. And if Christ be in you. And if Christ be in you. The body is dead. Uh-huh. Because of sin. Uh-huh. But the spirit is life. But the spirit is life. Because of righteousness. Uh-huh. That if the spirit of him. Then if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you dwells in you he that raised up Christ from the dead he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also uh -huh. quicken your mortal bodies uh -huh. by his spirit that dwelleth in you so can I look at me we are going to God is only committed when your obedience is perfected Look at the blessing of the Shunammite woman. The barrenness was not terminated because he's a Christian. The barrenness terminated after she has received instruction to build house for the prophet. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? After she has obeyed the instruction, Elisha has been coming to that house. How come that it was after the instruction was obeyed that he said, Madam, come, what do you want? So they were praying. They gave her the house. They moved their things and rented an apartment. And God spoke to him that this house will be the last house you will build. That five or seven years down the line, the man had more than 20 buildings. People give, people give. Hear me, child of God. I told you something that you don't know how enough what you have in your hand is until you begin to hear God. Eh? When you begin to hear God, you will know that what you have in your hand is, is more than what you are looking for. When you begin to hear God, when you begin to hear God, when you begin to hear God, eh? that is when you will know that, oh, this, this 20,000 that I think, oh, is the all that I have, the 20,000 can bring to billions. When you know how to hear God. The greatest gift any man can have. The greatest investment is the investment of what? Hearing God. As ye speak to me, your spirit will enter. Look at God spoke to Abraham. He said, hey, take your holy son. Go and sacrifice. You know what gave this guy conviction? Against all hope, he has never failed. So if he asks me to do this, then I'm sure he will not fail. Eh? Look at me. The real blessing of Abraham did not come until he has taken step. Be sure it is the voice of God. Move. Pay the price. Then do what? You are believing God here for marriage. Search it out. Isaiah 34 verse 16. Let me show you something. I know this, this scripture will help so many persons here. Isaiah 54 34 verse 16. Isaiah 34 verse 16. You will search it out. Read for me. Seek ye. Seek ye. Out of the book of the Lord. Out of the book of the Lord. And read. And read. No one of these no, no one of these shall fail. Uh -huh. None shall want her mate. Uh -huh. For my mouth it has commanded. Wait, he said, for no one of these shall fail. Or will anyone lack a mate? Any boy can disappoint you now. You remember what the Bible said? No one shall lack a mate. That means the one that disappoints is not the best. Against all hope, he has said it that no one shall lack his mate. 
if you understand this, you will not be using yourself to beg people. Huh? If you understand this, somebody walk up to you and say, I'm no longer interested in the relationship. Say, thank you, Jesus, for no man shall lack a mate. That means you are not my mate. My mate is coming. Huh? The reason why you are allowing the things of this world to eat you up is a sign that you have no revelation of who God is. Huh? If you have the revelation of who God is, nothing in this world will eat you up. Because before the thing comes, there is a scriptural assurance. There is a scriptural consolation for what God is about to say. Look at me. Anything that God cannot produce is not available. Did somebody hear that? That is my conclusion. That anything God cannot give me is not available. No man can give it to me. Huh? Anything God cannot produce is not what? Available. You are believing God for child. It looks as if he's delaying. The devil cannot give you child. He will only give you one of his slaves. And it will frustrate your life. Against all hope. Read for me finally, Luke chapter 18, verse 18. And a certain ruler asked him, uh -huh. saying, Good master. Let me tell you something. For every one of you that want to manifest your destiny, this should be the question. Good master, what shall I do? To inherit eternal life. Huh? What shall I what? To, do? To inherit eternal life. How many of you are ready to ask God, what shall I do? against all hope. It looks as if this thing is not possible. But God, I've seen it in your Bible. I've seen it in your word. Against all hope. What shall I do? Never conclude a man who has vowed to believe God. Never conclude a man. Eh? Job said, even though he slay me, yet I will love him. Did you see the result of Job? Never conclude a man who has vowed to follow God foolishly. Do you know what it means to follow God foolishly? Eh? You will not follow God with your human understanding. You will not follow God like the Moses of 2020. Say, so leave your father's house. You are ready to leave. He told his disciples, he said, when I sent you, did I send you with anything? They said, no. He said, lack at ye anything? They said, no. That means the God that called is faithful enough to provide. Stand on your feet.